George Michael. We've been talking all morning about George Michael who passed away suddenly yesterday at the age of 53, which raises a lot of questions. He passed peacefully to sleep, but why at the age of 53? Young, yeah. So before launching his solo career, his very successful solo career, Michael was half of the pop duo Dan Wham. That would be Wham. Wham. <laughs> which back in 1985 became the first Western pop band to ever play in China. Now, the documentary about that trip and that show was called Wham! in China, Foreign Skies, and it was produced by our friend who's here right now, Mr. Martin Lewis, fresh from London, I think. Just been just back from Homeland. Oh, okay, very, very good. Uh, what a piece of history, first of all, because it was a different world there. China is relatively open now compared to how it was then. How was the first concert received? It was incredible. I mean, it was really a cultural revelation, if you like, because um, they had gone, Wham! had gone there initially, really as a publicity stunt. It was to try and draw attention to them and help them break in America. But once they got there, George in particular became fascinated with this country that was just on the cusp of opening up. And the kids were fascinated because they'd grown up with no music that was remotely like it. And George put on such an amazing show. The, it, it engaged they, the audience. Did they know how to react. They, they've been instructed by the government. The government issued an edict that said, look, but don't learn. Meaning don't yeah. I'll copy this. But, you know, George's music was pretty infectious and the audience started getting up on their feet and he caught, captured them. And how did the Chinese react? Generally, it was really a, an enormous experience. Uh, one of the things was I went, went into the marketplace of Beijing with George and uh, Andrew, the other member of WAN, and they were fascinated to see... The, I don't know who was more fascinated, the Chinese with George and his fantastic appearance and hair and everything like that, or George with these quaint Chinese folks. You know, we're seeing George at the wall there, and uh, he's, he is taking... They're taking pictures of him. He was taking pictures. We saw a camera there, right, that he was holding on to. And he, you got that camera? I right happen here? to have that camera here. Wow. What had happened, actually, this is my dad's old standard 8mm Bell and Howell. You actually wind it up like that, so really old fashioned. Um, while we were on, I took George to the Great Wall because I thought he'd like to see it. I said, it's visible from outer space, you must see it. Inevitably, all the paparazzi followed because the paparazzi from England and America all wanted to see him. And at one point, he said, Martin, can I borrow your camera? Because I'd taken it just as a joke. And he started filming the photographers. Uh -huh. And later on, I realized that was his comment on this thing of being in a fishbowl. He didn't care for that. So he started filming them. You know, he had such a fascinating life and he was so successful, over a hundred million albums, but um, it, wasn't, it wasn't all easy for him. He struggled with, with drug use later in his life. You know, he was, got in trouble back in 1998 here in Beverly Hills for, for a lewd act. And yet, um, he even admitted that once he came out, you know, he wasn't necessarily a proud gay icon. It was tough for him. What was really tough for him was this. In some ways, he reminded me of the late, great George Harrison of the Beatles. Not musically, but in a certain sense. George Harrison loved to make music, didn't like the whole business of showbiz, of having to be constantly pried into for his personal life and everything. And George Michael was like that. He loved to create music. His passion was Motown and the great artists. He got to work with Aretha Franklin, one of his heroes. But he hated all this wretched tabloid But he media. also was on the fame machine, though. Yeah. It was part of the price of it, especially in the 80s. And he was very good at it. He knew how to do it, but he didn't like doing it. And I think that that was a, a, a conflict for him at all times. And he, he felt that if he could just create music, it would be fine. But that, that came with... Him. Now, yeah, you got to be good friends with him. There's part of George that always seemed to me that he was tortured. Am I overstating that? I think the torture was that dichotomy that I've just referred yeah. to, actually. I think not the sexuality, not the... There was a, a little bit of that. I think he was I I irritated that that should be a public matter. Why mm. should that be a public matter? And what he also had was a wonderfully wicked sense of humour. Um, I remember after that incident you referred to in Beverly Hills, I ran into him at a party and I chatted. I said, oh, gee, that was a, a, a tough thing you had to go through. And I said, you know, that, of all things, a plain clothes detective coming up to you. And he immediately said, Martin, that was 
wasn't so plain clothes. That was a $2,000 Gucci jacket he was wearing. Uh. And that's George's great sense right. of humor. Uh, but, you know, it, it's never good for anybody's career anytime. But back then, it was a uh, public bathroom across the street from Beverly Hills Hotel, Will Rogers Park. It got a lot of play, but it was pre-social media. Mm -hmm. Yes, makes a difference, doesn't it? It, it, it is. And uh, the other thing I found that with George, he 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 weathered those storms. But one thing he did on that trip to China, I noticed that a lot, he was only 21 years old at that time, and a lot of people would have said, "Oh, I'm going to China. I'll just take a couple of my mates with me." He was family oriented. He took his mum, his dad, his two sisters. He was constantly with them. And you know what? He had there was a big party when he had his first solo concert in L.A. His manager, a, a lovely chap called Michael Littman, had a big starry party here in Beverly Hills and you know what there was there was Bob Dylan and George Harrison and movie stars George wasn't interested in hobnobbing he wanted to hang with his friends and his family mm -hmm. and I thought that was a really yeah. wonderful quality he had all right Martin Lewis with some insights into uh, George Michael 53 something wrong there yeah sad yeah, very, sa a, no, he, very he, sad unexpected really unexpected. unexpected all right good to see you Martin always good to see you thank Steve. you so much